This video is sponsored by Major Dairy AI Services Limited. Welcome back. Thanks for watching. It is a beautiful spring like day here in southwestern Ontario in the middle of March and we are just loving it. I was outside earlier with the kids and Eddie getting some yard work done. Well, I was, they were playing. And Eddie earlier was working on a project in our kind of playroom office area. We're working on making my desk area bigger and being able to mount a screen up so that when I'm looking at my computer, I'm not always looking down because my neck's starting to get sore. So that has been good. And now I'm heading over to the barn. I haven't showed you kind of our day-to-day -day chores lately, so I'm gonna get into that. I'm feeding calves. This is the tractor we use mainly for our bagging business, but also use it a bit on the farm. There he comes. So as I was saying, this tractor we mainly use for our bagging business and a little bit on the farm. And Eddie, as you saw in our last video, is in the middle of getting everything cleaned up a little late in the year, like it's almost spring here, but you know how things go, things are busy. So he is cleaning the inside of this tractor this evening. I'm gonna go feed calves and I'm gonna tell you about our calving kind of system we have going on right now. And yeah, let's go. I can't believe I almost forgot to tell you guys too. I got new boots, I'm gonna show you. They are not the ones that I wanted, but I think I made a good choice. The one, I went to a shoe store nearby to try some boots on, and the ones I tried on, they weren't quite... They didn't have my size in like a high, um, high top boot. They just had like a medium length, medium rise, I don't know what to call it, in my size, and I wanted to go for the tall one. So I ordered them online, but of course like, Every, they were sold out everywhere, so I got kind of the next next rated down for cold, for temperatures cold. So the ones I tried on in the store were rated to minus 50. These ones are rated to minus 40 and they don't have as good of a grip, but they are so much better already than my last boots, so here they are. So these are muck boots. I'll put a link in the description to them, but so far I'm in love with them. They're pretty warm. I'm not sure how good they'll be for like a three season boot but so far I really like them the grip is really good on the bottom you want to see something I found in the fridge in the tractor I don't know do I so this is a coca-cola can from oh my goodness I don't know Hang could on. be five years that. ago I've had this tractor for six years and it was never opened and it's corroded and there's this black stuff that's left. Wow. So that's what that does to your stomach. That's why, <laughs> I, that's why I don't drink cool. That's quite something, eh? Yeah. So our caffeine and chores are basically reversed from each other in the morning versus the evening. So in the morning we start with feeding milk and in the evening we end with feeding milk so that we can get the maximum number of Eddie hours between is now milk cleaning feedings his tractor. or we'll ideally in the, play set, so that's the great. same amount of time we'll between how long that lasts. We are currently ready comes now. three times per day feeding but not quite ready to make that commitment yet. So in the evenings I always start with feeding grain and water. We keep our grain for the calves in the super hutches in this tote in the dairy barn for easy access. We feed our wean calves a pellet and straw mixer while we feed our calves on milk a different feed which is kept in bags in our little electrical slash feed room. This is the grain for the calves on milk which we feed on its own not mixed with straw. I never dumped new feed on top of old feed, so I always move over the old feed, then dump the new feed in the trough beside it. This system seems to work for us and they eat it all. I don't mix it together after adding the new feed, they just continue to eat it all and it never gets old or stale this way.
If the calves and hutches don't need a top up on their feed, I just swish the feed around in their bucket, which seems to get them excited and usually helps them eat it up. I do, however, always dump out old water and give fresh water regardless of whether there is any left or if it looks clean. Eddie and I and our nephew Bryson, who does chores sometimes too, don't usually fill up the buckets for one another when we're done. I'm not sure why as this would be a nice thing to do, and sometimes we surprise each other with it, but typically we don't. Okay, I just came to check on my kids and one of them needs help in a minute, so while I'm waiting, I just thought I would tell you about how we name our heifers, our girl calves. So typically, I believe, I could be wrong on this, but I believe what happens is typically you name your calf the same first letter as their mother and this creates a family line. I think some people even do the same first two letters, but I'm not sure. So when we started our herd, we got a lot of cows from Eddie's brother, so a lot of them had over time been had names with the same letters so that would happen so like you kind of you lose cows of different letters and then they kind of meld into a few of the same letters so we had a lot of d's h's i think r's maybe anyway and as we were having calves i was like oh these are a lot of the same letters this isn't a lot of variety and then i called Holstein canada the com the company you register your calves with your cows with and I said, do you have to use the same first letter as the mother? And they said, no, that's just a preference that a lot of people do. So what Eddie and I decided to do is we are going to run through the alphabet of our calves until our first calves that were born on our farm start having cow calves. And then we will use the letter of the first name for anything that was born on our farm. Otherwise, we're going to run through the alphabet for any of the heifers that are born from previously previously moved onto our farm cows. Does that make sense? So we've so far we've gone through the alphabet almost twice and yeah unfortunately like we lost cow, calf number one. We didn't start actually at calf number one. We started I think around calf number 10 is when I got this idea but we have lost a couple of heifers in there so we've lost a couple of letters but yeah we'll have lots of variety in our herd and I just thought that was a kind of a neat way to get a variety of names in the herd and kind of start our own, start from scratch, just Eddie and I. So for Valentine's Day this year, I got both Eddie and I each as a gift from my gift to him and his gift to me were these rings. <laughs> they are silicone, so they are safer to wear around the farm. I never wear my wedding rings, mostly just because they get dirty. Uh, and Eddie always had his on, but you know that you you could get it caught somewhere. And no, then... actually, I never used to wear it. Maybe. And a couple months ago, I started wearing it all the time. And then I just, we, we thought yeah. that was a bad idea. Yeah, because you can get caught on stuff on the farm or with yeah. a cow or. So we got these ones from a company called Kalo Q A L O, and unfortunately, Eddie's original ring didn't fit. I ordered him a size 11, but he was actually a size nine. So they let me keep the size 11 and just said pass it on to a first responder or someone you know that's in a, you know, a service industry. So I thought, why not pass it on to one of you guys? So if you know that you're a ring size 11, it's a men's ring, we'll show you it again. Leave, leave a comment, let us know that you would like it and I will randomly select someone to send it to. Make sure in your comment you leave a way for us to get in touch with you, like uh, a link to your Facebook page or Instagram yeah. account or even your email. Hi, so that we can get in touch with you for your address to send it out. Now it's time to freshen water. Oh, I'm warming up some cow's milk for one of our new calves. We like to feed them their mom's milk for the first five days so they can get all the antibodies and nutrients that they need to get a good start in life. We feed the calves warm water all through the year. Well, actually in the warmer months, we feed the super hutches with hose water that isn't warm but our calves on milk always get warm water, which is what they prefer. Four 
I dump out the old water from the super hutch troughs about two to three times per week and usually scrub them at the same time too, especially in the summertime. The hose was set up and I felt like using the hose since it could reach the closer super hutch, so that's what I did today. Eddie's bringing me fresh milk to feed the other new calf. Right now we have two, a heifer and a bull calf. Now that the feed and watering is done, if any hutches needed some bedding or anything else extra, I would do that now. But today, there's nothing else extra, so I'm moving on to milk. I'm putting the cow's milk into a bottle and putting the milk Eddie got for me into a bottle, then storing anything left over in the fridge to heat it up for the next feeding. We got this little girly who's having a snooze, resting peacefully on her straw bed. We got this massive bull calf who you can't even see in there. He'll get up. There we go. This massive beef bull. So we're very happy with that. He wants his milk. Yes, you do. I know. You're pretty cute. Yes, you are. You're pretty cute. Well, the beef bull was born on a Sunday morning and then the heifer was born the next day on the Monday. And it was kind of funny because the beef bull was being born right as Eddie was leaving chores to come in to go to get ready for church. So after church, Eddie usually likes to stay for a coffee and he's kind of one of the last people to get out of church. But this particular Sunday he came and found me. He's like, are you ready to go? Like, I'm kind of, I kind of want to check on that cow to see if like if we have a thousand dollar calf coming out of her, if it's a boy, I want to make sure the cow and the calf is okay. So we rushed home from church that Sunday and thankfully the calf was born and was really big and drank a full bottle and it was great, but it was kind of funny when uh, he's like, well, I kind of want to check on that calf. And these two ladies, 55 and 56, um, they were born on the same day and I keep having to remind myself that they're not twins. They were born from different mamas but they were born on the same day, so they're the exact same age, which is kind of neat on our farm because we have so few calvings that when it's on the same day, it's pretty exciting. So now our next calf is not due for a month and a half, and that will be calf, calf, our heifer number two. So the first heifer that was born on this barn will be having her first baby in a month and a half, so that'll be really exciting. We're so excited. I might tear up that day. Now I check the board to calculate how much milk replacer I need to mix up. We only have three calves on milk right now and one of them is being weaned so I don't need much at all. When we wean calves, we slowly drop them down by one liter over a two week period. I start with adding the hot water to the pail, then add the milk replacer, mix, add cold water, then mix again. Adding the hot water first helps the milk replacer to break down into liquid form and is listed right on the label of mixing instructions. Over 
right here. This one for the bull calf. We keep our bull calves separate just basically so that the driver knows where to pick them up when we ship them. Right on, buddy. Awesome. While the calves finish up drinking, I will show you the progress Eddie made on cleaning the inside of his tractor. Hard to do this. One-handed. Okay, looking good. He said to say, what did he tell me to tell you? That he was gonna sweep out the floor when it's dry. And he still has to clean the windows, but here is the inside of his precious 7210 tractor. Nice job, honey. So I'm not sure if you guys know this, but the title of our channel, Dairy Farm Kind of Life, is a bit of a play on words. You know the song, Semi-Charmed Kind of Life? I want something else. So anyway, that's, that is kind of the play on words for our YouTube channel. So Dairy Farm Kind of Life, Semi-Charm Kind of Life, there is a fun fact for you. It's just such a beautiful day. You can hear the birds chirping. You can see the kids playing on the playground. It's so nice. I can't wait for summer. It's going to be so good. Actually, my camera battery is dying. I didn't bring in another one, and I just have to clean bottles, and that's about it for the calves. So I think I'll wrap this video up here, but I first just want to tell you I am really enjoying doing this. I love the creative outlet of video editing and I'm just so happy that you're watching and I thank you so much. Um, another thing I wanted to get your opinion on is we are looking to get some new equipment. So on my list is a GoPro camera for Eddie so that he can take it around with him a little bit more and get some vlogging, farm, farm vlogging. Just kind of with him, he does not like using my camera and his phone camera is terrible. So GoPro for Eddie or else we also really want to get a drone because we've got field work coming up and we just think that would be amazing footage. We had a drone last year that our equipment dealer company let us use, which was great, but we'd like to get one of our own. So I would like to know from you, what should we get first? GoPro for Eddie or drone? And if you have any recommendations of other types of cameras, that you think are better then please leave that in the comments let us know and yeah hopefully we can get some some good fo footage for you soon and thanks for supporting dairy hope to see you next time